Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the launch event of McGill's Black Mentorship Program. My name is Marilyn Ehun, and I'm a graduate of the class of 2015 and currently pursuing a PhD in public health at the Université de Montréal. Before we begin, I just want to take another moment to acknowledge the land that we are on and to encourage each of us to learn more about the indigenous keepers of the lands we inhabit through resources such as native-land.ca. When we founded the McGill Black Alumni Association, our aim was to create a community of alumni who could connect professionally with each other and come together to give back to the McGill community. This mentorship program is the manifestation of that desire, and it's designed to connect Black undergraduate and graduate students with alumni, faculty, and staff in meaningful mentoring relationships. Over the past year, MBAA has organized this program with the Subcommittee on Racialized and Ethnic Persons of the McGill Joint Board Senate Committee on Equity, with the support from the McGill Alumni Association. We are particularly, we're sorry, we're incredibly grateful for their support, and I want to particularly thank Shanice Yard, Adrian Piggott, and Kay Das for their amazing work in bringing this program to life. The program will officially begin in January 2021, and we will be sending out an email next week with mentor and mentee sign-up forms. So please keep an eye out on your inboxes and our social media pages. The event tonight will consist of a 40 minute discussion amongst our panelists, moderated by Shanice Yard, followed by a 30 minute Q&A session with audience questions. Without further ado, I am pleased to introduce our panelists and moderator. Anne Janice Ferre has been working in administration at McGill for over 40 years. She has worked in various capacities, including human resources advisor, assistant to the Dean of Education, and as a mentor to individuals across McGill. Dr. Ni Addy is the Associate Director of Africa Outreach in the Deputy Provost Student Life and Learning Office, where he develops, manages, and assesses initiatives supporting the McGill MasterCloud Foundation scholars as they transition from academic studies to entrepreneurship and employment for impact in Africa. He also teaches at the Max Bell School of Public Policy and the African Studies Program. Samito is an alumnus who graduated in 2010 with a Bachelor in Music. He is a singer, songwriter, producer, and founder of Fezzi Hass, which is a new Montreal-based creative brand providing collaborators with the structure to develop and deliver high-value products with a strong social point of view. Iyanu Shrege is a student in her fourth year studying political science and African studies at McGill. And she is currently the VP Pol Political for the Black Students Network. And our moderator, Shanice Yard, is an equity education advisor in anti-oppression and anti-racism education at McGill. And she has been actively involved in organizing this program. She is also the author of a children's book called Dear Black Girls, which will be out in February and is currently available for pre-order. We will be sharing a link to the book's webpage in the post-event email. We are incredibly grateful to all the panelists and the moderator for their time, and I'm looking forward to hearing them share their experiences tonight. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Marilyn, for that introduction and all of the incredible work that you uh, yourself, as well as the McGill Black Alumni Association has been doing over the past few years, um, from of course launching to just the way that you've been able to, to connect and gather the community in such a short period of time. And I think it really speaks to a deep need that we are all kind of collectively experiencing at McGill and beyond. So, so much gratitude to you um, and your team for all of the work uh, that you have done and have, will continue to do into the future. And of course, thank you to all of the organizers uh, who have made this event possible. There's so much as we all are kind of learning that goes into creating these online virtual spaces um, that don't necessarily always feel the same. I know it would be incredible to be in a room together and have wine and cheese and some good snacks, um, but we are making do with what we have. And so we're really honored that so many of you are joining us this evening to hear from these incredible panelists about their experience and also their vision for what we can co-create together moving forward. And I feel really honored to be moderating this conversation and to be opening up some, some space for us, I think, to just be you know, in dialogue with each other and to really be thinking about what is it that Black folks 
are wanting and needing at this particular at this particular time, but I think also um, for a long time coming. So it feels exciting and definitely timely and relevant to be engaging in this conversation and for this launch to be um, on the horizon. So thank you as well to the panelists for your time and energy. Um, I actually want to to open with a quote uh, before we jump into questions, um, which for me really kind of illustrates, uh, when I think of mentorship, illustrates um, the importance of it and the role of it um, and beyond like the the value of mentorship and what it can do not only for individuals but for us as a collective and as a community or, or communities plural. Um, so the quote is by the late and great uh, Toni Morrison who I am forever grateful for her just brilliance and wisdom and the way um, that she uses words you know to communicate and to invite us in. Um, and she's also someone who has always and always did center Black people and Blackness in her work. And I think that is so incredibly important. Um, and so she says, I tell my students, when you get these jobs that you have been so brilliantly trained for, just remember that your real job is that if you are free, you need to free somebody else. If you have some power, then your job is to empower somebody else. This is not just a grab bag candy game. And so for me, that really speaks to, I think, again, the importance and the value of mentorship and the way that we have a responsibility and also an opportunity to think about how we can best support each other as we navigate these institutions and also more broadly, just as we navigate life. Um, so for today, we have uh, some questions that we've prepared for the panelists, but we really want to hear from you um, and as Marilyn shared in the introduction, uh, we're going to have a formal Q&A period, um, but please feel free to submit your questions. There's like a question tool or feature that should be um, uh, clear on your screen. So feel free to pop those questions in as they come up and they will be forwarded to me and then I'll be able to ask those to the moderators throughout uh, throughout the evening in mm -hmm. addition to during that formal Q&A period. So if you're like feeling like a question is relevant and you wanna ask it, please feel free to do so. Um, we really wanna be like flexible and and again, kind of create the vibe as if we're together in a room. Um, so please feel free to ask those questions and to share those reflections in, through that feature. Um, but to start, I want to, to pose this first question to the panelists and um, with all of my questions anyways, whoever's kind of, you know, feeling the fire and wants to respond, please feel free. Um, and for the audience as well, if, if you want to direct a question to a particular person, please just indicate that in your alongside your question and we'll ensure that that person um, receives, receives it. So the first question is uh, what format or what type of mentoring relationship, whether it's personal, professional, academic, have you engaged in and why did you seek them out? So really just speaking to like your own personal experience with mentorship, um, whether that's being on the, the receiving end or on the giving end. So if anyone's feeling like they wanna start and open us up, please feel free. Okay, I'll start. Go for it. Anne. Hi. Okay, so um, as previously stated, as I've been at McGill for over 40 years and have had the opportunity to be a mentor and a coach to many in the university and in the larger community. So I've been able to go out to institutions on behalf of um, the university and as well uh, within the community, within the Black community, as I'm invited in to share my experience and my skills. So as I said, I have I've gone to Shad Business Center to support the Quebec Netball Federation. I was invited there by Avis Roberts Joseph. I've also been at the Black Community Association in the Youth Development Program, teaching them how to write resumes, how to present themselves during interviews. 
I've been at the Quebec Board of Black Educators summer camp teaching the juniors how to write poetry. At Elizabeth House, I was able to also go there and support the young ladies. I'm not sure if you guys know about Elizabeth House. It's a place where youth who get pregnant are given housing support and coached uh, to, to be able to, to finish their educational, um, their high school education to be um, productive members of society. So, uh, and it, I think more importantly within McGill, I was coach and mentor to the director in SEED who had come in to set up the new office. But at the same time, while she had the academic background, did not have, let's say, the administrative or managerial experience to, 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 to supervise. So I've been doing, as I said, inside of McGill and also outside McGill in the wider community. Thank you so much, Anne. I feel really, um, I mean, honored to like know all of you in different contexts as well. That doesn't always happen on a panel, but I, I am forever grateful for the fact that I got to meet Anne uh, in my second week um, on the at this job back in 2016, and that was just so transformative for me to be able to to meet this black woman so early on in this position, um, especially when we don't always see ourselves, you know, represented or to feel seen on, on campus, it was it was really important to be able to like meet her so early on. And so I'm so grateful you're here. Yeah. Um, is there anyone else who want to speak to that kind of question, like reflecting on your own personal experience um, with mentorship? Well, I can, I can go ahead and um, I will speak mostly as a mentee, right? And um, the formats that uh, I, I engaged in were actually a mix, very often a mix of personal and academic. And the reason why I saw those kind of relationships was initially a matter of access. Um, I grew up in Maputo, Mozambique, and uh, very early I, um, I knew I wanted to go to school in music and also potentially make a career in music but access but soon I, I realized you know there were certain kinds of information that we just did not have access at that particular period of, of of my life and what I did what felt like the way to go about it was often to like approach like all the people who were more knowledgeable um experienced you know great musicians and just go and befriend them and sort of um start learning and gaining experience for them and very often that evolved into like a sort of a mentorship kind of relationship but what happened with that was that was that as years went by i think that became the method that was that i was more you know at ease with you know and eventually at the later um stage in my career i sort of met a uh, a very experienced lawyer, copyright lawyer, who actually became sort of my guiding um, person and also like a protector. Actually, his name is um, Graham Gilfillan, and he was for the longest time the lawyer for uh, late singer Miriam Makeba. So with this person, I actually was able to learn a lot. And that has become, we've been friends for 17 years, and he's still that person, <laughs> that go-to person. Uh, you know, from where, you know, I get information and who has helped me, like, evolve in the music business back home and here, you know. So that's my most um, important experience, you know. Of course, I sought other types of mentorship, but I would say that that one is the one that worked for me. That kind of relationship is what worked for me, and I still seek that kind of, you know, personal uh, contact and yeah friendship and mm. learning thank you Sumito. yeah i think that's so important especially in regards to to access like the gaining access and having that support so that we can explore and, and enter those different other professions or fields or areas of interest as ours uh me or ianu 
do you have any reflections that you want to share about your experience? Sure, I'll 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 go next um, if that's that's okay. I hope uh, you can hear me uh, loud and clear. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah, so in my case, I've been mentee and mentor. Um, I'll talk first of all about being a mentor, uh, particularly at McGill, right? I I do remember um, as as a faculty member when I started at McGill in 2013. Um, in the faculty of, of management, you know, I had a number of students who they, they actually, they, 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 I think, given that the way the way the students are black students, you know, they, they, they approached me. I think there was a natural uh, questioning, like, oh wow, hold up, uh, you're you're a black faculty member, right? Mm -hmm. They had questions, right? And um, you know, I think some of the mm -hmm. questions were beyond just academics, you know. So I found that there was that gravitation, you know, because the truth of the matter is there are so few of us, right? Um, and so th that that tends to, to happen. Um, I I also have been more formally a mentor. I was, I've been formally a mentor in the MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program um, for a number of years. And, and and in that role, you know, I've also had scholars who, uh, you know, I, I, that, that uh, gravitate towards me that I've, I've worked with, right? So that there's, there's been more the formal role as a mentor, and there has been that informal role, which tends to happen when you have, you know, a, a demographic that is 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 underrepresented, right? Um, I found this to be the case. Uh, I, I did gravitate towards mm -hmm. faculty members, and this this maybe switches to me as a mentee. When I was at Princeton, um, there were a number of faculty members that I I, I did my masters at Princeton. And there were there were a number of faculty members that I gravitated towards because they were working in the area of, of international development, right? Um, there was a professor, an engineering professor at Princeton, Willie Subayijo, who was a mentor uh, to me. Um, very accomplished, um, was doing great work in international development, and 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 so I I sought him out. It was informal, but he was my mentor. I I also had. Mm -hmm. What I call, I tend to out call a mentorship is, is an exchange. As an undergraduate, you know, student at Swarthmore College in the U.S., when I, I, I came from Ghana, I went to Swarthmore. I, I mentored a number of young, actually young kids, right? For me, those were actually some of the highlights of my time as an undergraduate, coming from Ghana, being in a totally new place, being one of a few, a handful of, 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 of black students, you know, in, 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 a, in a setting where there were a few of us. I was mentoring, these were students from North Philadelphia. And to this day, those were some of the highlights. And I think it, it, it really struck me how mentorship is, is an exchange. I got much more from that relationship, I think, than the kids did because I was, you know, I was alone. I felt alone very often, right? And what I needed was that mentorship actually allowed me to, to share with them experiences as an African, and they were mostly African-American. And so it, it gave me a chance to share with them some of what I brought uh, from Africa in a setting that was not overly structured, I'd say. It allowed me to be me, right, uh, as a mentor. So those are some of the different experiences I've had in mentoring and, and being mentored. Thank you for sharing especially like the both perspectives of being both mentor and mentee. Yeah, no. All right. Thank you, Shanice. Yeah, so I guess I'll speak more to my experiences as a mentee because um, I'm gradually getting into that, uh, being in that role of being a mentor, but it's progressing as time will go on. Uh, so I can speak mostly to being in, on the other side. So I would just like to say, like, before um, offering my comment in response to the question, I would like to acknowledge the events unfolding in multiple African countries at this very moment. And I'm sure this, these situations are affecting many of us and our families on this call in different ways. And I also just want to acknowledge that mentorship uh, fosters bridges between different generations and facilitates intergenerational knowledge transfer and exchange. Um, which can work to the collective advancement 
of members of the diaspora in general. And just by having this advancement, this could put us in a better situation to effectively contribute to our situations at home. So I just wanted to bring that up because I just think it's right to do when so many things are unfolding, especially in my country, Nigeria, where genocide just occurred. So yeah, so just to answer your question, um, most of the mentorships I've sought out, they're academic and professional. There are certain things I want to do after graduating, and I just felt it would be helpful to talk to uh, professionals and students in grad school who are in places I want to be in. So just by being the oldest child in my house, I don't necessarily have like anyone to ask, oh, like, how are these things? So it's just nice to like go out of my home, mm -hmm. speak relationships and it's yeah it it's certainly it's certainly been beneficial uh, so far but I guess I will talk more to that later on so thank you absolutely yeah thank you and thank you for naming that as well um in regards to what's happening in Nigeria and across the continent and more broadly as well and I think it's uh, for me it's another good reminder about um, how we are one connected um, and how we cannot separate ourselves from like what's happening in our communities, whether it's locally or globally. And I think that's like an important piece that's often, um, I think, missing, you know, from mentorship opportunities is are the ways in which we are impacted um, by all of these like different factors, you know, that, that, that shape our own experiences and our own realities. And I think it's so incredibly important that we don't separate that one from ourselves or from the conversations that we're having. So I really appreciate that, Yana. Um, okay, no questions have come through yet, so it's okay, get settled. And uh, it's okay if you feel shy, but audience, please feel free to pop those questions in and get them to us. Um, but I will ask another one as we as we await those. So the second question, um, you know, through the experience of the mentorship opportunities that you've all kind of spoken to, again, whether on the mentorship side, on the mentor side or on the mentee side, um, have you felt like those relationships or experiences have met your expectations? And why or why not? So in the experiences that you've had with mentorship, has, has it met your expectations or perhaps exceeded your expectations? If you can speak a little bit more to that. On, on my end, I could say that, um, yes, some of my um, mentorship has met expectations because in going out there and selling the university or speaking to individuals about presenting themselves uh, during interviews or preparing for interviews, I have seen the results where people from some of the institutions that I had gone to were able through my connections come into the university and secure employment. As well, many times um, individuals in the community would reach out to me to say, well, look, I know this person, this person is looking for a job, can you help? And I would do my best to try and and plug them, move things around, give them um, some some opportunities. And uh, if they came, especially if they came to me for interviews, I took it upon myself to go back to them, give them feedback. How can you present yourself better? How can you present yourself that even if you don't get the, the job at hand, that you're able to leave an impression where you could, you know, at least be called back for another opportunity. So again, as I said, I think, yes, um, largely I could see that it was beneficial, but again, on the other hand, you I also know that because things are always evolving and changing that as a mentor or a coach, your job is never done. So um, I'm always there to, to do more, to learn more, to, to help people, especially in this, you know, unprecedented time. So it has been, you know, uh, an enriching um, situation. Thank you, Anne. Sumita, do you have any thoughts about that? Um, yeah, I have, um, 
again, I speak of, I'm, I'm going to be speaking more about this one relationship, mentoring relationship that I have because it had the most impact in my life. And um, generally, yes, because um, through our, you know, communication and work, uh, my mentor always encouraged me to really learn to understand music contracts and also uh, prioritize like copyright ownership and also learn mechanisms to protect myself because the music industry, if I mean, I'm sure you've heard, can be very, very brutal, especially if you thinking as a black creative in an industry that is known for a hundred years to be like white, you know? So navigating that space is really brutal and, and very violent. So just having, had this person that from an early age kept telling me, you know, you have to be careful with this, you have to work on this and that, um, was very, very important. Now, of course he hoped I wouldn't get in trouble, right? But I did get in trouble at one point and I signed that bad, bad, bad contract, right? But um, that's exactly when uh, he made the greatest impact on me because he actually came to rescue me and he guided me through the steps that I needed to get out of that contract, which was a contract that was meant to hold me hostage for like many, many years, like 15 years, you know, and three albums for nothing. So just having been able to get that out of that and understanding how important it is to like learn all the information that he passed me was a success. Today, I no longer get in trouble, but I still have to fight some fights, and but I don't get in trouble. And I think that for me was uh, was a success on its own. And also the fact that we've been on this relationship for 17 years, you know, growing to it, into it, and then just being able to be friends, it's it's, it's a success for me. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Ni or Yanu? I'm not sure if you want. Okay, go for it, Yanu. Yeah, so I would say my mentorship experiences have exceeded my expectations, considering that I became exposed to the power of transparency, which I believe goes beyond honesty. Because I see honesty as just simply uh, answering questions you're asked, and transparency will uh, allow your mentor to answer questions or to, to even just say things that they may not necessarily have been asked. So in my relationships with my mentors, that's something that has come up and it's something I'm very grateful for. Um, it really speaks to the power of having a mentor as opposed to having a role model, because with a role model, you can look at them on the internet, you could read their books, the, the books that they've written, and it's just simply not enough because they don't really get to know you and mentorship just allows things to be like more personable. And that's something I have experienced just by talking to, especially like black students who are in graduate programs. Um, they're transparent with me about their process of applying, how they felt uh, as they were uh, in those stressful moments. So it's something I found to be, uh, yeah, very rewarding. Thank you. Yeah. So I think if, if I may add, if I may add to what uh, Ianu just said about transparency, yeah, I, find, I think that's a great way to put it. You know, transparency. I my my mentorship experiences have met my expectations to a large degree because, you know, it just came. They came. They've come naturally. Right. I've been very fortunate. Um, some of my 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 sort of strongest mentors have been my parents, actually. Right. Um, I, I've been in the field of education. My mother is an educationist. Some of these things happened unconsciously for me, right? I've had other relatives uh, who, who somehow I've, I've, I've tried a certain path that other relatives had, had already done, right? So, and they've been my mentors. Um, I'll give an example. You know, I remember before I left Ghana for the first time going to the U.S. to, to study, I had I had one of my uncles who studied abroad already. You know, told me you know. He, he, they were transparent about some of the experiences and, and what to expect, right? And and what things that you shouldn't get to you, right? Um, 
race issues that, you know, like, you know, figure out how you deal with all of that. You know, so I had I had mentorship that others didn't have. I, I, I realized this much more when I started studying, you know, and left Ghana, studying in the U.S., and I had colleagues who didn't have these kinds of, uh, of, of relationships. So I think that's when I realized the privilege that, that I've had, right? And I think that's also where I realized the need for more structured mentorship because not everyone, you know, has, has these opportunities. Not everyone, you know, has has these uh, these privileges, right? So I think that's where it becomes very important, especially when you have people who are doing something very different from, you know, those around them, right? If you're entering, you know, if you come from uh, you, those around you are doing a following particular path and you're choosing to do something totally different, then it becomes much more important to have these these uh, structured uh, mentorship uh, opportunities uh, for, for, for people. You know, but I think overall, my, my mentorship experiences have been great, you know, um, Absolutely. Thank you. And I think that you bring up a really important point around, again, the different ways that mentorship can exist. Um, and I think, you know, especially for Black folks, a lot of, um, I would say, more of the informal mentorship that we might receive is often like in connection to our family or friends or community through like that guidance, particularly when we're attempting to kind of like enter or navigate different institutions. Um, and so I think, again, it's really interesting to think about like those support networks that do exist for us, but really thinking about what could those structured pieces um, start to look like. And, and I think that brings up the important question of like where, you know, where does the responsibility shift for those things being created? So I think it's exciting to think about something like that being, um, you know, formed within like the Miguel context where we're thinking about the informal spaces, where I think we're continuously kind of seeking out that mentorship and support and guidance, but then also being able to couple that with something that's structured and formal, I think is incredibly important. Um, okay, awesome. We have some questions coming in, which is exciting. Uh, one is actually like a logistical question about the, the program itself, um, which I will ask and answer, because uh, it's very fair that, that y'all might not know the, the answer to it. Um, but someone was just asking if the goal was to kind of assign a long-term mentor that they will have for the duration of their studies, or if there's an opportunity to develop relationships with several mentors. And so the plan for the program is to, for a, a current Black student, either undergraduate or graduate, to be uh, matched with a an alumni or employee at McGill, and it's for a full academic year. So that's like the length of the program for, for those who are wondering. And so there is the opportunity to develop those, those mentorship relationships with other people kind of throughout the duration of your studies, depending of course, where you are currently, um, but it's for a full academic year. Um, another question that I think is really important, uh, someone is just kind of reflecting on um, the, the importance of mentorship from people from your same cultural or ethnic background, and that seeming to be um, important for many people. Um, but they are also wondering if a mentor uh, can be from a different professional background, and if that is like as efficient when navigating professional careers. So I'm not sure if anyone has thoughts there in terms of having a mentor, a mentor or engaging in a mentorship relationship where the person is not necessarily in your field or area. Um, so does anyone feel like they can speak to, to that either from personal experience or, or otherwise? Yeah, yeah, no, go for it. Yeah, I guess I can speak to that. So two summers ago, I worked as a research assistant at the University of Alberta um, under a professor who's actually in the faculty of nursing. So just with that of course like i'm a political science student nursing is definitely very much different from political science but it's just i learned so many things um in that process and it's just um seeking mentorship in in a field that maybe you wouldn't necessarily have considered before would would just kind of like open your mind to certain um ideas that you never would have thought about so even if you know okay like i'm never going to enter that field for example like i don't ever see myself entering nursing uh i know that there's so many things i've learned through that and they're also just like different ways of thinking in different fields which can be beneficial if you take it from those fields and apply it to your own 
So through my work um, with uh, the professor in nursing, there are just certain like research methods I was able to kind of like get exposed to, which have become important like in my political science work, of course. Um, they're definitely not the same and not everything is directly applicable, but it's just a way of helping you think more expansively about certain ideas and certain problems in the world. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the other the other piece there that's important is sometimes um, it can be uh, and, and you kind of spoke to this, it can be difficult to find a mentor in your program if you are especially looking for someone who is black or who's from the same like ethnic or cultural background from you. So I think in many ways, we sometimes have to actually seek outside of potentially the areas that we're in just because of, of the lack of representation or numbers of people. Um, yeah, I thought maybe I might yeah. add a little bit to, to experiencing mentorship from people from other fields. I, I started off my undergraduate, my, my, I started off in engineering and you know, I I did part part of the reason I did that is because I was a math science guy. You know, from Ghana, the, the education system I was part of in Ghana at the time was very structured. You know, it was you know was was very. Uh, I was a math science guy, so that the, the engineering was the natural the natural progression, right? Um, so I came to Swarthmore in the U.S. and studied engineering. Most of most of what I knew, most of those around me were were engineers. One of the most influential mentors I had was actually a professor in in education. Um, I took I took a class in education because I was interested in that, um, and you know I I think I, I was very much one of those rational thinker, right? Um, so I had ways of of making decisions, um, and I, I do remember to this day I still remember the very moment when this professor told me about you know making decisions and listening to my gut, right? Mm -hmm. It was very strange to me, right? But you know to this day it's actually one of those things that I found very instructive, you know, in terms of, of advice from my mentor. Um, she was in education. I I never imagined I would I'd, I'd do a PhD in education, but my PhD is in education, right? Um, <laughs> at the time, I was very focused on 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 on, on engineering. Um, I talked about a professor I had at at, at, uh, at Princeton, where my my master's was in international development. That professor was in engineering. Um, uh, we we did. You know, we I had my background had been in engineering, although I didn't end up majoring. I, I majored in economics, right? But the thing is, there's certain shared uh, ways of of thinking, uh, ways of doing things that that were instructive. But I think the differences that the different the, the mentors from different backgrounds brought also really opened my world, right, to possibilities because I started off with a very uh, narrow uh, sort of vision, right, and and that really expanded my vision. Absolutely, yeah, so important. Also, just to add on, you know, what two other panelists um, mentioned, as a musician, the most natural way would have been, for instance, for me to seek another musician, right, or a music teacher to, um, to be mentored by. But in my case, it was interesting because it was a, a lawyer. It so happens it was a copyright lawyer, which is related. But mm -hmm. the fact that I was mentored by him actually gave me first-hand insight on things that I think as a musician, I would have never had access to. You know, for instance, like he told me a lot of stories uh, about, I mean, Mama Miriam Makeba, mm -hmm. all the dispute cases that she was in because they had for many years to like chase all the money that she had lost in different mm -hmm. territories in, in the world, you know, which was a major, major take on. So I was able to hear those stories and also gain insight into how those things work. So it actually just complemented my 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 um, experience as a musician because I could see it from the outside too. So it was very 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 helpful, you know, and and you know it opened up my my uh, champ vision. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the expansion, the expansion of like our perspective, I think, is so important, and just strengthens our capacity to to engage in our work. So I think you're all speaking to the value um, of you know working kind of across different disciplines or different areas. And me, I just want to second what you were saying about the the trusting or the thinking with your gut as being so important as well. And 
um, you know, there's a reason why they why they call the gut the second brain because it is so powerful. And I think that like just speaks to the importance of like really kind of trusting our bodies, which I think is something that, um, you know, as black folks, we know how to do really well. Um, and I have a question for you from the audience. <laughs> So someone's wondering, uh, having been part of McGill and seeing the evolving changes with the campus and community um, within all of your years here, what has been the biggest change that you have seen when it comes to mentorship within the university? And what has been the hardest thing, in your opinion, to put in place? Um, so they're kind of the, the, the sub question to that is like, what has yet to happen in the 40 years that you think um, should be um, happening? Yeah, what I what I believe is there has been no formal mentorship over the over the forty years, and the population of blacks on campus is increasing, while it's far from where it should be in terms of the representation within the university versus the makeup of the Canada or the Quebec society. Um, I think this is why you have the Black Alumni Association now um, looking to put in place a, um, a formal program to be there to support Black academics, Black, black staff, and also um, Black students. So as again, as I said, I think it, it's minimal but now i think we're at the point of looking to address this which is so this program will be very important and it's definitely needed because i know that students have been asking for that help and support yeah absolutely thank you for mm -hmm. for speaking to that and i think like that mm -hmm. that history piece is so important and going back to what you shared as well yano about the the need for like intergenerational building um, and knowledge sharing is incredibly important there so that we can think about the, the history and how that like shapes the present and of course the future context. Um, a question for Samito and, and or Ianu that has come in, um, would you be able to tell us a little bit more about your actual like process for seeking out a mentor? Wow, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, I mean, it's, it was always, I always go back to the beginning. It was always like instant, but also like just, coming from a tradition where you have to ask older people, you know, I think I knew I had to like seek um, people who knew more than I, like Yano said, like people who were in places that I wanted to be. And with this particular person, I met him in, um, I was probably 21 and I was in Cape Town for a year. And actually there was this, it was during the Cape Town Jazz International Jazz Festival, and they had um, uh, they were holding a workshop on how to make money in the music business, which is very like you know you want you want to go. But then I went there, and he was actually teaching us how to, I mean, the the copyright law and how to navigate in the music business. It was more you know learning the ins and outs of of what it is to be a musician a creator in that environment and at the end of the event i thought that was so important and so relevant and inaccessible at that moment that i felt i needed to approach him and sort of ask his contact and i remember asking his contact and he gave me and and that same year i went back to maputo and that same year um they were starting a conversation in Mozambique on creating the new uh, society of, of, of um, copyrights. This is like 2004, so it's like it's a new thing. Nobody knows how 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 to go about it. So at that moment, someone approached me and he was like, "Hey, do you know how where we could find like a specialist, you know, who could actually come and give a workshop?" And I was like, "Yeah, I think I know someone." So. It was so fortunate that it happened at that moment and we got hold of him and he generously came to Maputo for three days and like he passed information and for me and him that was the beginning of a you know of a relationship and that just grew and he was he's like 15 years older than I 
So, I mean, that's how I usually do it. Even this day, that's how I approach it. I think that's what worked for me. I've tried other ways, but uh, that's what I was able to access. So I meet people, I talk with them, and you know, I try to build a friendship. Sometimes it doesn't work, you know, so, but. Yeah, trial and error. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, yeah, so I guess, yeah. sorry about that. I guess I can speak to how um, I went about that process as well. So I'd say like, yeah, I, I said before that my mentorship experiences have been pretty much uh, fruitful, but then I would say that process of seeking it out, it definitely wasn't the easiest thing. There are times uh, seeking mentorships or like seeking mentors, um, like it, it took like a lot of initiative on my part and then there are also other times it's basically just develop organically so when it came to like me seeking them out myself i actually went on linkedin and i would just search up some keywords of like people in my field like politics and all that kind of stuff development and i'd also put like mcgill on the side too and luckily I would be able to get some uh, results from that. So I actually reached out to some people and just messaged them, asked them a few questions. And most people were like very friendly, but then of course there were some people who would, I guess they're kind of like, oh, why is this like young girl like reaching out to me? Which I know could be a little weird. I can understand that part. And then there even some times I got like ignored. So I, I think with that, like you, you shouldn't be discouraged uh, especially if you're reaching out to professionals, these are very busy individuals. So everybody has like different things they're managing. So I feel like just having this structured program, the McGill Black Alumni Association is making, like is really going to turn things around for the better and will really provide students with that opportunity. And it will also like make it easier uh, to access these kinds of opportunities. So I also did mention that there are times um, and things have developed organically. So I am also in African studies and Professor Niadi just happens to be my thesis supervisor. He also taught uh, my uh, taught a seminar, an African studies seminar in winter of 2020. So just like being in these classes has like really helped me a lot. Also being involved in the Black Students Network, the African Studies Students Association, uh, because there are times Black professors and Black professionals would attend these events. So when you see them there, they're pretty much open to um, to just like connecting with students. So I've also uh, sought mentorships in, in those experiences as well. Thank you so much. That was really enriching. Um, Anna and me, I'm wondering if you can speak to, uh, you know, kind of on the on the perspective or the side of being a mentor. Um, if you have like tips to kind of share with the audience around, I have a bit of a two part question. One, tips on like how people can actually ask for uh, mentorship. And so what that could look like. Um, and then also kind of what, you know, makes a good mentee. I know that's clear. So kind of like, what's the a way that that you know the the ones who are looking for the mentorship can kind of ask and reach out for that, and then like what you know what makes a good mentee in terms of what people can think about. Did you uh, did you pose this to me? Uh, to to me? Yeah, to this Anne? Is for, for Anne and me. So you can go for Anne. Uh, okay. So, um, I know that there are a lot of people in positions where. Uh, whether it's in organization or within the university, where they see a need for someone to get support, okay? So then it would be up to the, the, the individuals to, to, to seek the appropriate resources or, or individuals to, to, to provide that support. Or, um, let's say with the students, I know with the, this new program, then there will be a formal application. So if, if people have a need, they can go to the website to see what resources or what support is provided and they can complete the application and submit it. And I would assume there would be some um, matching, matching or selection that would, would happen. But for, for me personally, I know that over the years, as I said, individuals would reach out to me and say, well, look, I know this person, this person could use some help. 
either finding a job or um, I remember a few years back where I was pleasantly surprised as an administrator in uh, the Institute of Islamic Studies where one of the administrators over in residences had a group of black uh, youths who she was uh, mentoring. She had them in a program and she was able to bring them to my office because she felt that they see in me as an administrator, as a black administrator in a big organization is very important for them to see that in spite of everything, if you do what you have to do, that at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, there could be excellent results. So again, I think it's because people could identify who they think needs a uh, uh, mentorship support so that they know who to partner them with and or if we have formal resources where we can you know have the information up available and people can go to it as the need arises that uh, another good thing could be at the end of every uh, beginning of every year if um if the association the alumni association can find out who are the new students coming in and if there needs to be an outreach to the new students to let them know look we're here we're here for you this is what we can do and provide so we're here but please um, use our resources or seek us out yeah okay. so yeah I, th I think to add to, to what uh, Anne uh, spoke about as well, I think there is, so the, the, we've, we, I think we all talked about the informal channels uh, that, where, where mentorship happens. You know, I've found that um, when a mentee has been, has directed a mentorship relationship, usually it's, 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 it's useful for them, right? You know, when they're, when they're able to, to, you know, seek out, you know, you've had people who I'm very explicit. I've had people who explicitly told me, you know what, I want you to be a mentor, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and said, this is what I want out of that, that relationship. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, it's, when they direct it, it's very useful. Um, that said, we know that it doesn't always happen that way. And I think that that's where a program like what's been launched is very important, you know, in the sense that when you have these structured opportunities that allow people who are looking but may not have a chance you know, if if you do, if somebody doesn't take a class I'm teaching, it's very it's very rare that they might they might get to to engage uh, with me. Or, or some some cases you, you, they might come through a friend, right? You know, but when you have a program that actually enables that gathering, um, you know, then it makes it more possible that people can can, can be more explicit. Um, I think also the guidance that a program provides, you know, saying okay, these are questions, these are how. These are the, 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 the skills, these are, you know, sort of the factors that we're looking to, to match. Um, I think it really helps uh, both the mentor and the mentee, right? Um, I also think, and this is, this is the case um, when you have any underrepresented group. You know, I, I, had, I was in a conference once, I remember we had, we had some very young uh, uh, scholars who were talking about the challenge of finding mentorship, right? And they were saying, you know what, they find that Sometimes the, the, the black faculty of very few, they're hard to, 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 to get a hold of them. And part of the challenge is that those black faculty are also, quote unquote, fighting their own battles, right? Um, and that, that was a response that was given. I mean, I think there's similar cases with, with if you take uh, women, women in, in certain positions, you know, the challenges that they themselves are, are trying to deal with, right? Um, uh, in some cases, the incentive structures. So again, this is where when you have a program that is structured like what is being launched, it really affords the structures that both mentor and mentee need to actually have productive relationships. The guidance, the structures, you know, those become very key um, uh, for, 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 for these things to, have to, be, to happen more than otherwise uh, would. Absolutely, thank you. And I think it speaks as well to the, um, the important piece that's not always like kind of discussed, which is that like ne networking and mentorship are not like innate skills. They're very much things mm -hmm. that we either have mm -hmm. to like develop in terms of practice or are taught to us. And so I think we, we really see the discrepancy there in terms of like who has the opportunity to learn those skills and to develop those skills. Um, and I think that's why, as you're saying, it's so incredibly important that there are also 
um, either programs or structures that are developed within the institution to make that process and experience more accessible to everybody, kind of regardless of what you're coming into, um, regardless of what you're coming with in terms of like your own experience um, or knowledge that is shared with you. And so I think it's so important um, to, to create those, those, those formal structures, but also to think about all of the, the different components and levels of labor that are, that are involved in the mentorship process. Um, that's not always like possible or sustainable. Um, for Sumito and, and Ianu, kind of on the other, the flip side, what would you say is is important in terms of um, what 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 makes a good mentor? No pressure. There's lo lots of different answers. <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead, Ianu. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so I would say like just kind of trailing off what I said before, just being transparent and also being open with your journey to get to where you are. Um, I, I just think it's also important to talk about the different factors that come into getting where you are, like who who is your community, um, who uh, who are you like surrounded by? So I guess that kind of is like, who is your community? And also just like maybe certain challenges you may have had, like getting to where you are. So like, have you had some health issues? Have you had uh, maybe some financial issues, some academic issues that have uh, occurred on your way to getting to where you are? Because I think just being open with those things can really help the mentee who may be experiencing these things and may be afraid to talk about these things. So um, just on that mentor side, if you are willing to share these things and, and not holding on to all these gems you have, I think that could be that could be really beneficial in a ment in a mentorship. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and just speaking to community too, I think um, a good mentorship is always going to be someone who's actually able to understand the context where you come from and the challenges that you have and is able to, you know, transcend the, let's say, the academic teachings to actually guide you in a, at a personal level. I think, like I mentioned at the beginning, what made the greatest impact, the moment that made the greatest impact in my learning was... Uh, when he came to rescue me from that contract and it, because it showed like an insane amount of patience he wasn't supposed to be there he wasn't he had the choice to not be there because he had taught me enough to not get in trouble but he was generous enough yeah <laughs> I see Adi laughing yeah it's a, it's a very interesting story Professor Adi um, but yeah he was very patient and I think great mentorships have that they're very patient they really um, care about you and they they want you to succeed they want you to learn and that's what have made the greatest impression in, in me from you know uh, mentors yeah. absolutely and again um, I just wanted to yeah go for it I just want to add something I just wanted to add something about you know my experience as a mentee also you know some of what has 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 made mentorship great um there has been that recognition again it goes maybe it goes back i think it goes back to what yano said about transparency you yeah. know that mentorship is, is is not a hierarchy it's an exchange right you know i have someone who has 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 been a mentor of sorts to me and this is someone very prominent person um you know he was he you know it was a period where he was was to be Ghana's president you know i mean i'm, I'm not going to, going to go into details but this is someone who um made me realize he really valued every time we met you know initially you know it was like why would he want to spend time with me <laughs> right um but part of what he he, he taught he, he made me realize was that actually he he gained a lot from my interactions as well right and um, this was you know i was much younger um but i think part of what you realize is i think a mentor empowers you know it's an exchange it's not it's not a hierarchy it's, it's it, it, mentors get a lot out of mentorship relationships as well and i think once we realize that as a mentee you know, there, there's something about what we learn and what we're actually able to, to give as well. So I think that makes a, a good mentor as well. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I really appreciate that. And I think it's so incredibly important. And also, I think there's like a similar um, related kind of context, if you think about like the teacher student relationship as well, where as teachers or educators, um, you know, we learn so much from our students as well, like that, that idea of the exchange, I think is so important and disrupting that idea of the hierarchy. Um, and I think another element as well that kind of I think is sometimes perpetuated is this idea that um, in order to be a mentor, like the person has to be older than the mentee as well. And I think it's it's a lot of the conversation that's happening um, currently is around like the need and the importance um, of having mentors who are actually younger than you, um, kind of regardless of the, the area or the field that you're in. But I think especially so if you're like working either in education or in context where you're like working with young people. And so also just thinking about, you know, being expansive in terms of who we think of mentors or who we think about being in exchange with and getting support from and going back to, uh, as you said earlier, Ianu, like that need for the intergenerational relationship building, which I think is so important in terms of like how we can actually learn from each other across generations and across those different lines, like those lines of difference that actually make us um yeah, like stronger and more effective in terms of the work that we do. So that's exciting. Um, okay, let's see, we have a few other questions that have come through. Um, so kind of leading into a little bit more about like this current program that's being launched in January. Um, this is an open question. So how do you see uh, this Black Mentorship Program guiding or uh, helping the participants? So either the, the mentors or the mentees or both. So in, I think connected to that, like what are you excited about seeing? And do you want to start maybe, with that? Maybe, maybe I'll start. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, maybe I'll start. You know, yeah, I think, I think um, you know, I think one, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm with, with the MasterCard uh, uh, Foundation, uh, Scholars program at McGill, and we, we, there's, a, there's a new program that's been started as well, the Transitions uh, pro Project. And the idea is to, to, to uh, support these African MasterCard scholars from, from academic studies to, to uh, the workforce, right? And I think it, it raises up this issue of uh, mentorship. There's academic mentorship, and I think this was one of the first questions you asked about the types of, of mentorship. I think I'm very excited at the prospect of, you know, you know students might have academic mentors, but also alumni, you know, who are bringing in the professional experiences, um, who are also looking, I think mentors very often have found the case to be that they are looking to still be connected with the academic side of things. You know, there's a lot that students uh, do. Um, there's, there's an intergenerational session that, uh, that I've, I've been, I've been co-moderating with, with, uh, with, with someone I consider a mentor as well, right? And I think there's a lot of exchange that, that goes on there. So I'm, I'm very excited about the prospect of the academic, the professional, and those connections, you know, I think there, there needs to be more bridging between the studies and and and, and the, the workforce. Yeah, thank you. Go for it, Ianu. Yeah, so I'm part of the Black Students Network this year, and um, this uh, school year we've seen like many things come about. We've seen the launch of the Anti-Black Racism Action Plan. So I'm not going to speak to that here, but what I would say is that. There are just so many things that have come about at McGill um, that do have the potential of um, kind of like advancing the position of Black students at McGill. Of course, the plan is not perfect um, and there's still like many revisions to be made. But what I will say is that the launch of this plan and even just uh, having Black faculty and students and staff come together to have discussions surrounding the plan, I see like these things that have just transpired as the result of generations of advocacy of black students at McGill. Of course, I'm I'm on the exec now for the Black Students Network, but I really don't think it was our exec alone that was able to achieve these things. I'm I'm really sure that it's uh it's the black individuals who were here before us that really provided the foundations for what we are doing and what we are seeing at McGill. So I feel uh, just with the potential of this mentorship program that is going to be launched in January, I really see this as a way of just like br bridging the different generations and also making sure that we, we have the knowledge we need to keep on going because there's a tendency to kind of 
repeat what had been done in the previous generation. Uh, there are some young people who would say, I am not my parents, but then sometimes you grow up and you are your parents, right? Mm -hmm. So you see yourself repeating the same thing. So if you, if we're able to, as young people, if we're able to have those relationships up with people who are older than us, who would explain their journeys, like we'll see how they've done certain things and see how we can modify it in order to make change. Because even like with the Black Student Network, many of the demands we have, they're really not new. They've been there since the 1970s. And we want to assure that like, as we're here as young people, we do something different than has been done before in order to actually have a, a change that is positive for black students and of course black students faculty and staff at McGill yeah amazing thank you any other thoughts about uh yeah what you're excited to see in this program or how you think black folks are going to benefit from it um on on my end I see that the launch of this program will be a wealth of information for the current students because they have the benefit of those who have gone before, those who are currently here in the, in the system. And I think all of that would lend itself towards empowering them better, putting them in a better place so that they feel comfortable when they see that there is some representation or that there are people whom they can go to because they have commonness. So uh, my thinking is that this would be a great effort and a great support for the new influx of whether it's students and staff and, and academics. So I laud this program highly and I think it's uh, long overdue. Mm -hmm. I also see it perhaps as an opportunity to foster safety for Black, young Black students. I think this program is sending a very strong signal that someone cares about them and they're not alone dealing with daily challenges in campus, you know. Now they know they can go ask a question to someone. They have someone who cares about them like deeply and I think this is something really great. I, I spoke about this with uh, Marilyn when we first met. Um, I was a music student and the music school happens to be completely separate from the rest of the campus. So there was a big isolation, like I, I was socially isolated there, but I didn't know how to go about, about it to change that, you know? So I feel like this gives th those kind of students an opportunity, you know, to feel part of, you know, the bigger community. And, um, and I'm very excited to, to see it be launched. Thank you. Um, I feel like you all kind of answered what was going to be my last question, but in case you have any final kind of reflections just to share, I'm wondering if you have um, yeah, any final thoughts or, or a message that you want to share with the audience who's watching or the audience who's going to be watching the recording in terms of what you want um, Black folks to know. Or maybe like maybe I would think what what is what's something that you would have wanted to hear, you know? Yeah, maybe I'll start. I mean, I think I think um, at the first, at the end of the first term, my teaching at McGill, I remember I had a I had a student it was it was a black student who approached me, and you know, so I said, you know what, I'm gonna tell you something. One of the things I realized, I I, I worked very hard, studied very hard, but I didn't I did, I wasn't I didn't network as much as some of my my colleagues did. Mm -hmm. And they have jobs. I don't have a job, right? Um, and then you know, those, it's, it's something that's come up for me a number of times. One of the things is is mentorship. I think sometimes people, students might think, you know, what I need to really focus on on the quote unquote the hard stuff. You know, the studying. That's very important. You know, doing that studying. I, I was uh, I was in a meeting today where one of the things that somebody brought up is someone who's very prominent in the political scene in Ghana right now. And these are older older folks uh, that I, I met when I talk about the fact that, you know what, we, we we develop this person now, right? And that's the reality of a lot of things. I mean, sometimes there, there, there are people, people we, 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 sometimes we, we look at situations and we don't understand what has gone on behind the scenes, right? Mentorship 
is a key thing that uh, leads to development. And as I've said, it's an exchange, right? So I think ultimately what I'd say is, you know, for everyone out there, particularly black students, black faculty, black staff, um, you know, it's something that I think is, it's, it's, this program I think is a great opportunity for us to, mm -hmm. to, to, to build things up. Thank you, Professor Addy. Yeah, I guess I can comment next. Um, <clears throat> so of course, like we live in Canada, most of us are associated with an institution that is, uh, it's, it's very white. And we don't really see many people like us in these institutions. Uh, we don't see staff like us. We don't see many faculty like us. We don't see many students like us. So <clears throat> I think just as we go beyond McGill um, in our different spheres, uh, there is the opportunity to become the first Black person to do something. So just with that, like I would say it's important to not just be the first, but to be the first of many. And I feel like mentorship allows that to happen. Um, mentorship opens those doors to other Black people in our communities who may not know how to access these access different institutions and different positions where they can you know make these changes and become like you so i'd also say to mentors like please be open to that idea of making space spaces for other uh black black individuals to be where you are as well it's not going to be a threat if many black people are there like we really shouldn't be in competition with each other and i would also say to like mentees i really feel like this is, this is a great opportunity for us. We haven't seen anything like this before, and you wouldn't have to be in my position where you're searching people up on LinkedIn. Like it's literally being created for us. So I feel as mentees, we could really harness this opportunity because it has great potential. Yes, absolutely. Thank okay. you so much for that. Um, what, what I can say is, that this is extremely important and I see great benefits coming from it. I believe that we as individuals, members on the panel, we're all where we are right now because we've stood on the shoulders of a lot of giants and it's good to be able to give, uh, give back and give others the chance maybe to stand on our shoulders as they move forward and achieve that which they are destined for. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll just say that I agree with everything that was said. Um, I, 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 I see it also again the same thing as a, an opportunity for like healing and you know uh, safety and you know health for everyone. You know, and like you said at the beginning, Yano. I think it's time for us to like really get together and you know be empathic with the challenges of each of each other. And I think that place gives us that opportunity. You know, we didn't have it before. And I would say like for young black students, just take it, you know, and run with it and you know, let's let's build on this and make it our home. Thank you so much. Um I have like both chills and also feel warm in my bellies, in my guts. So thank you, Ni, for that reference as well. Um, it was such an honor to, and so easy to just like hold this space for this conversation and everything that you shared was so powerful and, and resonate, like I'm getting messages both in the chat and on my phone that people are like loving this conversation and of course wanting more. And I really think it speaks to the need for us to continue to be in dialogue to continue to create and to take spaces um, for us to share and to reflect and to, to think about the ways in which we can advance and, and progress. So a million thank yous to all of you for your time and your labor and your energy, both at McGill and beyond. The work that you're doing is so impactful and is felt kind of across the community and again beyond. And so thank you so much. Um, I'm going to invite Marilyn to rejoin us to say a few words on behalf of the McGill Black Alumni Association and to officially close this evening. But thank you again to the panelists. Thank you to the audience who have joined us and for your incredible questions. I didn't even get through the rest of mine because yours was so good. Um, and I think 
you know, we could have kept talking for, for a lot longer, but I think this is an incredible starting point, not the end point, but a starting point. And I'm excited to see what's to come. Um, so Marilyn, thank you. We will pass it over to you. Thank you very much, Janice. And I just want to reiterate what Janice just said to take the time to thank you all again for attending this event and for your support for this program. And to also thank all of our panelists and Shanice for taking the time to be here tonight and engaging in such a wonderful discussion. And I genuinely enjoyed listening to you all this evening, particularly on how mentorship is a vehicle for intergenerational and intercultural exchanges, the importance of connecting with mentors and mentees outside of our professional and academic fields of interest, even if it can be intimidating sometimes to approach them. And especially about how mentorship is an exchange and not a hierarchy. I think that's really important. And I hope that through this program, um, both mentors and mentees will be able to learn from each other and to build community with one another. So as I mentioned earlier, we will be sending out an email with the mentor and mentee sign up forms within the next week. And we will also be sharing these forms in our social media platforms. And um, we plan on accepting applications on a rolling basis, and the plan is to start the first part of the program in January of 2021. And I saw that some people had questions a little bit more about the structure of the program and how it's going to work. And we'll include a bit of this information in the email we send out so that people have a clear idea of what they're signing up for when they sign up to be either a mentor or a mentee. And um, we will also include a link to a survey that the MBAA launched because we're trying to get alumni feedback on the anti-Black racism plan that Iyanu mentioned earlier on. It's really important that we voice our concerns and our reactions to this plan so that we can bring it back to senior administration. And I think it's really important as alumni that we continue to give back to our school and to contribute to um, this plan that has the potential to move the university forward. Um, finally, if anyone is interested in being more involved in MBAA, we're currently recruiting members for a few exec positions, and we'll also include that information in our email. And so I just want to thank you once again for attending this event, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. I just want to share uh, a reflection that came through um, last minute in the chat. Uh, from someone in the audience who says, as a founding member of the McGill Black Faculty and Staff Caucus, it has been encouraging to listen to the comments of the panelists. The future is looking bright. And I totally agree. So thank you again, everybody, for your, your incredible contributions and your commitment to not only us, but to this work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.